Well, good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well. So, ploughed up the road last night, four-hour drive up to Scotland to meet up with Bri and Adrian. And as you can see, I'm at this location that actually Adam and I visited just this last year um, with these beautiful pine trees. I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at right now. The, there's snow everywhere. It's really white. The lock itself is frozen over, so it looks absolutely stunning. Obviously, we've also got all these frost-coloured branches and everything, so I really wanted to get down here and repeat this shot. Now, what I'm trying, which is something different to what I did last time I was here, is I'm going for a full-frame shot. I did take those while I was here, but I, I opted for the pano shot in the end. I'm going to try different variations as the light comes up, and obviously we're going to get some uh, mountain light when the actual sun comes up from behind me up this way. Um, it should start to light this scene up really nicely, but it's already looking absolutely beautiful this morning. Well worth the dash up the road, even though I'm absolutely knackered this morning. But yeah, so what I'm going to do is, I'll get you to the back of the camera, show you the frame I've got at the moment, and then we're going to play around and see what different crops I can get. I'll probably go back to the pano shot if I can put the wider lens on as well, and uh, see what we can make out of it this morning. Click record now. So hopefully what you should see here is the uh, is the full frame crop that I was saying, the 4x3. And if I can just bring my display up, there's my grid. So you can see what I'm focusing on, on this lower section of the image, off to the left there, is the, one of the pine trees on the left. Now I've just moved my composition slightly, I just need to move it in a little bit further. So what I'm actually doing is lining that pine tree up on the left side of my grid of thirds i just find that it looks really pleasing and obviously you've got all this frost down in the foreground down here which you, we didn't really have last time so the the pano format worked really well last time i was here to kind of get rid of a lot of that clutter but with all this being all one tone and all these lovely whites this morning i think it really worked well to leave more foreground in so I've actually got that those pine trees themselves, they're almost in that centre of the frame and then I've got a bit of sky above there as well. You can see we're getting a little bit of colour back there as well now, we're getting a little bit of pink in the sky. And obviously the, uh, the greys of the clouds above, we've got some lovely blue tones in them as well. Nothing complicated about this shot at all because we've got no wind at all so we don't have to worry about ISO or shutter speed, anything like that really. I'm at a second exposure at the minute, just under exposing just slightly, F16, ISO 100. And yeah, it's just really simple, nothing complicated. I think this shot's gonna turn out well as the full frame version. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap lenses because obviously I'm quite close to the trees at the minute. Swap lenses over, put the wide angle lens on and maybe try a pano version of this as well. So swapped lens over, I'll just press record now so you can see the difference. And what I've opted for this time is obviously going for the panel because I've put the wider angle on, which is 23mm, I can actually get a nice wider shot because where I was before with the 35 to 70, if I'd gone in and tried to do a pano, it would have chopped the top of the trees off. So just getting this little bit wider has really helped me to get this pano shot in. And the pano works really well as well as well actually it's just uh, what I've done is similar to what I did with the full frame shot I've lined that tree up on the first third on the left it's so cold though it's minus 11 <laughs> so, so it's 
it's a bit of a struggle this morning to try and get the words out. But as you can see on the left, I've got a few branches from a bush just encroaching on the left hand side. And that's one thing with this pano shot I'm going to have to remove. I think it's just slightly getting on my nerves just off to the left there. It's, it just makes, it's quite distracting and it uh, just makes the scene look a little bit more cluttered than it need be. So again, nothing drastically different in settings. Um, I just, in fact, for some reason, I've just gone down to F9, which I didn't mean to do. So at this now, ISO 100 F16, a third of a second and yeah just keeping grabbing these shots as hopefully this light does come up what I'm actually hoping for is for these hills over on the right hand side and the ones behind the trees there to actually start to light up and illuminate just that little bit of light just to lift the scene slightly but both shots work really well as they are lovely pastel colors there so as you can see now just as I was saying a minute ago waiting for the light the light is actually starting to just hit the hills but beyond the trees there through at the back lovely pink light so that's what we're waiting for with these shots so i'm gonna have to kind of probably swap lenses back and forward as i take both the full frame version and the uh the, the pano version but yeah just this little bit of light's just gonna help it big time So, just gonna make our way back along, back to the van now, because I think the light's almost done where we've just been. Even though, if I just spin you around, you can see, up there, we're still getting a bit of light on the hillside there, but for actual light from where we were, where those trees are, I think it's pretty much done. So, gonna make our way back along to the van, maybe go and grab some breakfast and then see how the rest of the day progresses. But conditions here today are absolutely stunning. It's really nice to get a really nice winter scene. Something I haven't really got a lot of because down where I live, we don't get a whole lot. We do get snow every now and then. And in fact, we got a little bit before I left, but it wasn't a great deal. So nice to come up here and get some proper wintry conditions. So been and got some breakfast. And we've come back to the same area to have a bit of a walk around, see what we can find. There's a few, um, few trees that are uh, on the sides of the roads back up here and uh, it's that cold that the snow's just clinging to them or the frost and snow is clinging to them. Getting a little bit of light coming through now as well. So I'm just gonna try and find something I can kind of isolate and use a slightly different shot these Scots pines are beautiful up here and with all the snow clinging to them I think there's definitely a shot there and also there's um, some silver birches which look really nice with this frost and snow attached so hopefully I'll have a wander up and down this row and see what I can find. So yeah I was up by those trees up there that, and they were backlit but the, as you can see on my face the light's so harsh it wasn't really working because there was a lot of bright spots behind the trees so I think it's gonna be a shot for later on when the light's a bit softer. But just for now, if I spin you around just a little here, you'll see just what I'm looking at, is the hills down the bottom of this lake, way off in the distance there. You can see there's some lovely gray cloud coming above the hills. And with the light lighting it up from my left over here, it's hitting those hills on the right there giving them a nice light on the mountains themselves while at the same time getting a really dark sky above it and it's a really nice contrast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to the back of the camera in a second and I'll walk you through what I've done. It's a strip panel, surprise, surprise, but um, 
it, it works really, really well. It's kind of similar to the shot I took this morning from over by the trees there. However, I've got closer down to the lake shore itself to kind of eliminate a few of these bushes and trees being in the frame. And yeah, I'll get you to the back of the camera so you can see better. Right, so what you should see is, you can see I've got this strip pano set up again. And where before I was struggling a little bit to get those reeds out in the distance out of the frame, actually I can lower the frame slightly here. They can still be in there, but they're not causing as much of a problem. Now, of course, while I've been setting it up to talk you through this, the clouds now rolled in and the hills aren't lit up as much as they were. However, I'll be able to show you the shots that I took just before I set this off recording. But you can see what I'm looking at. I've got those trees off in the lower part of the frame there, in the lower third. I'm focused off to the left there, just at the top of that lower third. And yeah, you can see the amount of cloud that's come in there, but it's coming really quite thick now. So obviously, if I take a shot now, it won't be half as good as the one I've just taken with the light on the hills there, but you get the idea. So same settings though, I was at ISO 100, F16, 60th of a second, just getting on for a stop under there because the light on the hills was quite bright. Uh, yeah, simple shot, nothing really to it, but I thought it was a really nice shot to take because it's a closer perspective than the one I took earlier and again you've got lots of these wintry conditions in here. So as you can see, the, uh, the weather's really come in now and it's absolutely chucking it down with snow. So it's going to make for some fantastic conditions later. I've just been taking a couple of handheld shots actually of the trees that we were shooting this morning from, the, uh, from this side of it though. And they look really nice with the snow coming down in front of them. Just with a relatively fast shutter speed to, to capture all of that dropping. It just looks really nice. It softens the whole background. And obviously because of the snow, it's a whiteout back there. So you don't get any distractions behind there apart from Bry talking rubbish to the camera back that way. So uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll have got a couple of shots here and then hopefully as the weather develops today, we'll get a few more as conditions change later. Hopefully this will start to pass through later. And obviously once this weather clears, We'll get some nice weather behind it and maybe some nice light, but uh, let's see what happens today. So guys, we've actually come back further along the road, back towards the Glencoe direction. As you can see, there's colour over to my right here, but there's nothing actually happening, which is where I was going to shoot, which is in this direction. 
So we'll wait and see what happens. The light might develop, but as for now, I'm kind of ignoring this because it's just a bit too flat for my liking anyway. So what I'm focusing on is over here, you can just see there is some nice light hitting those hills in the distance there. And you've got those lovely clouds which are catching colour. Nice sort of texture about them. Nothing complicated about the image. I just I like it quite a lot. But the, the one or two things annoy me. It's the amount of clutter that's in the foreground. So I've tried a shot with that in there, and I've also tried raising the lens up a little to avoid as much as much as that clutter as I can. But um, but yeah. So what I'm going to do is get into the back of the camera, and I'll show you what I've got lined up. Right. So what I'll do is I'll get this camera to spring back to life again because it's died with the cold there we go and I'll just press record on the back of here now so what you should be seeing is a strip pano again and obviously we've got that colour above that hill in the distance there you can just see I've got that down in that lower section of my image and quite a lot of sky above the mountains themselves I've got constrained to that bottom section of the lower third there you can just see I've got my intersections on both mountains so they're kind of echoing each other on either side there so I've got that lined up there now as you can see what happens is you've got all of that those bushes and trees in the bottom there which they kind of work you've also got to watch the fact that there's a road runs right the way through it's on the right here and it does uh, you do get vehicles like wagons going through every now and then so you've got to be careful not to get them in but I'm just rattling shots on here. I've got the 100 to 200, and I've got ISO 200, 20th of a second F60, and I've got the uh, the IS switched on to make sure that this wind doesn't kind of knock the lens too much. But it's turning out okay. Really simple, nothing complicated about it. But you can see what happens when I zoom out a little. You see how much more distracting elements there are in the bottom of the frame. I've tried it, as I said before, with that. And I've tried it as well, just removing as much as that as possible there. So, I'm going to grab these shots as the light develops, and I'll pop them up for you. So guys, I think as the light fades now, I think we're going to call it quits for the day. Been a fantastic day, again meeting up with Bry and Adrian. Had a few laughs today, it's been fantastic fun to get out in this wintry landscape in Glencoe. I think I've got some fantastic shots that I'm really quite pleased with because one of the things I was missing from my portfolio was quite a few wintry shots because I haven't really had these conditions that much to be honest. But uh, yeah, so glad I made the effort and got up here last night. Got more to come yet. We're going to get head back out tomorrow. Tomorrow's our last day before we head back down again. So hopefully we'll get some more decent conditions in the morning and find some something else to photograph. Anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you have. From a wintry Glencoe, I'll see you in the next video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.